Good morning, Adventure Nation. We're at the Jamaica Beach RV Park, just outside of Galveston, Texas. And yesterday, as you saw in the video, we explored Galveston just a tiny, tiny bit. Just took a glimpse of it. Today is hardcore Galveston exploring. We're gonna stuff as much as we can <laughs> into this video to show you guys Galveston, because this is the motorhome experiment. Okay, we're gonna go into Galveston and we're gonna try to fit in as much yeah, touristy Galveston stuff. Galveston in one day. Galveston in one day, which is a little insane because it seems like there's a lot to do here, but we're going to do that. We're actually gonna load up the bikes. We're gonna do a little bit of biking, a little bit of walking, a little bit of driving, a little bit of everything. We got a lot of stuff going on. Some of the houses are getting ready for Mardi Gras, which they celebrate here quite a bit, we understand. One of the first stops we're gonna make is for breakfast. We're going to a place called the Mosquito Cafe that we understand is supposed to be one of the best breakfasts here in the city, but we also understand that it's gonna be almost impossible to get into. Step up, please. just saying that our biggest expense is eating out again. It is what it is. Month number two and biggest expense. We're out of control right now. We like to eat out. So the Mosquito Cafe, thumbs up for sure. Two of us for lunch was, including tip, was 36 bucks. So pretty reasonable. Uh, food was phenomenal. Mine was great. I had something called the Health Nut. It was like beans and tortillas and salad mix to get it was you make I don't it know, sound too healthy no it was really healthy it was great it was tasty yeah it was tasty and you had some kind of veggie shroom thing uh, it turned out to be like a sh mushroom burger like a mushroom burger that is not what i was expecting in my head but it was pretty good yeah so the mosquito cafe definitely thumbs up and we didn't shoot any of the food we were talking to the young couple next to us and they gave us some recommendations for some more eating out places in the next couple of days so we've been trying those out too but very busy place. Very Make busy. Make sure to be patient. Yeah. And uh, probably early is a good time to go. Breakfast and they have mimosas and you can have like a little brunch there. Yeah, it took us about, from the time we got in line to order, probably about an hour to an hour and a half for lunch. Something like that, but cool. The place we're going to now is called the Bishop's Palace. I haven't a clue what it's about except for it looks like a really fancy building. And I'm assuming that since it's called the Bishop's Palace that the Bishop used to live here? Or still loves, lives here? I don't know. It was built by an Irish, something by a lawyer. Built and, by an Irish lawyer and then, and, live in, and now the there's bishop living here, this. Like that. It's open. It looks cool. Oh, see, we're already going down into the basement of this There's creepy building. There. Oh, the plaque. This is a historical survey. So this was a 1900 sur storm survivor. We've seen that on a couple of different buildings and built in 1886 to 1893, Colonel Walter Gresham. So you guys can read that. And now we're going down into the creepy basement and going inside.
we are inside of Bishop's Palace. One of the cool things that you can do here is the audio tour. Yeah, it comes with your fee, with your entrance, and they give you this little like iPod, and you just match the number here, like the picture with the number, to the picture and number right there. And then you can just hear it. And then it gives you information audibly so that you don't have to you know, do a lot of reading, which is good for me. But we're, we're not gonna show you guys everything inside of the Bishop's Palace. There's just way too much to see here. It's a very, very cool place. So we're gonna give you guys some shots as we go around and then we'll talk about it after we're done. Yep. And this part of the home is the library, which was essentially their entertainment center back in the day. You had books to keep you busy. There wasn't TVs and radio and all that kind of stuff. There might've been radio back then, but uh, a house like this would always usually have a library so that they could keep all of their important books and a way to keep themselves entertained by reading. And this one has a really cool library. That is quite the dining room table. This was the bishop's bedroom. Oh wow. He was very like into technology. Look at that corner. Yeah. Wow, look at that. I wonder if that's from the 1800s, 1850s. What do you think? Okay, Lorena, so the Bishop Palace here in Galveston, your thoughts? My thoughts. It's a uh, very cool place a lot of detail like from top oh, to the bottom details amazing I mean, ceilings floors walls everything has details so that's Watched the up. one thing amazing about it but um on the rating system that we came up with i would say on the rating one two three or four it's uh if in the area two two so if you're in the area you should check it out definitely not uh something that you have to see but pretty cool Oh, yeah. All right, next on the agenda. We're going towards the Strand and Harbor Boulevard so we can go and see the movie about the history of Galveston. Oh, and Pier the, 21? The storm and all that stuff. Ah, cool. And the pirate, John Lafitte. Yes. I don't know anything about him, but I but know we'll the name. We'll find out. We're going to find out. We'll let you know. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys wondered this, but I did, especially after what happened in the Gulf of Mexico there a few years ago with an oil rig, you know, blowing up. But I've always wondered what it would be like to be on one. And today, we are going to be on one. We're going to check it out. This is the Exxon Mobil Oil Rig Museum. And so the Ocean Star. And this should be kind of cool. Lori, I know this has always been a dream of yours. Yes. To go you know on an oil rig. Paul always said, oh, it's always her plans. So I never know what we're going to do, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is not my plan. <laughs> I might have had something to do with this. It's a little bit windy, Lori. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're going to, I hope you had something to put on your hair while you're in here. Okay, the Ocean Star is what's called a jack-up rig. So you guys will be able to get some information about that right there. 
And so this particular rig here, the Ocean Star, had 49 people on board. So, you know, small town here in Texas. These here are all the different types of drill bits that they use, different sizes. Kind of cool, one of them moved because you'd get your fingers caught in there. They all look like something out of a science fiction movie. Suits like this one here allow a diver to go down to depths of 2,300 feet and work on various things, either rigs or lines or things like that. This thing is pretty ridiculous. It makes them almost like they're a, an underwater robot controlled by a person. This is a really cool model here. It shows you what it might look like up on the surface. And then also what it's gonna look like down underneath. Very cool. So this here is an example of a rig called the Bullwinkle. And then what's really cool about this is if you come over here, it shows the different pictures and the sizes of the Bullwinkle compared to Empire State Building, Sears Tower, Eiffel Tower, the San Jacinto Monument. So it gives you an idea of how tall that thing really is. Kind of, kind of neat. This is a model kind of showing you what's from above and you can see the water level as well. What various rigs would look like We're now outside on the top deck and actually where the drilling rig is, right here. Got their own helicopter in case they need it. They need to go pick up lunch or something. Got to go get a hamburger. Go get who's some gonna, Mexican food. Yeah, who's going to go and do the run? Yep. Okay, I'll do it. Let me check all the white pelicans out here. Oh, Lori just informed me they're white American pelicans and I got to get it right. All right, so over here in the background, you can see the Ocean Star Drilling Rig Museum. And we're going to save you guys some money. Because this one, we're going to rate a one. It's our first pip pad. You got our hair in my mouth. Sorry. It's, it's windy. It's the first thing we're going to rate a one. And the reason is, it is just so technical. Everything in there is explaining technical aspects of drilling. And it's really a drilling propaganda thing saying that you know we're safe we're awesome we do all the cool things and if you're an engineer if you're into the really technical stuff you'll probably enjoy it but other than that you can skip this if you're here in Galveston it's really not worth it it was nine dollars a piece so 18 bucks for the two of us and really think that it's something that you could skip yep. and I know skip that you it. would agree with me right yeah I was yawning a lot in there it's just too technical. I, I couldn't understand half of what they were saying at the end right. of the day. And, and I will say, gang, that I, I am pro-alternative energy. So the whole oil industry for me needs to somehow go away. go away. If I could have electric car, electric RV, electric bicycles, electric motorcycles, I would have electric everything, power it by solar, and I'd be good to go. Even the electric RV. Yeah, well, yeah, electric RV. I already have existed. the electric <laughs> unicycle. but. You know, I don't want to get into too much of that, but there's still plastics and things like that. You're gonna, we need the oil industry right now, but I'm pro uh, alternative energy. Bottom line, stay
stay away from the oil rig museum unless you're an engineer or you want to work on a rig or maybe it's something in your family that they did and you want to see what they experienced then it's yeah, okay no. but nah save your money for ice cream or something else ice cream like. <laughs> coffee this building here is kind of cool it's the harbor house hotel so it's actually a hotel and restaurant area here at pier 21 very cool looking i haven't got a chance to see the rooms and stuff but uh kind of a nice place to stay if you're in Galveston, you want to be close to the wharf and close to the the ships and stuff of course you do have a view of the uh oil rigs on the other side but you know still kind of cool we just did a movie at pier 21 on the pirate john lafitte don't spend the six bucks on that you can probably find out the information you need on youtube and now we're doing a harbor tour on the Seagull 2, which should be interesting. I feel like we're wasting a lot of money today. Are you yeah, today's just like like burning 20s really? kind of a day. Just spending money for the sake of spending money. Just for you guys. Just to give you guys something to see. To save you guys money. To save so you guys money. <laughs> so, so far we saved you $9 on the Air Oil Rig Museum. We saved you another 6 bucks on the John Lafitte movie. $15. Bucks right $15. There. See that? And uh, we'll tell you about the Harbor Cruise here in just a little bit. Hi there. Howdy howdy. Thank you guys. Watch your head, watch your step. Thank you very much, dear. I'm not gonna lie, I was worried there for a minute. It's like what kind of dolphin tour guide am I? I can't even find a dolphin. Thank you very much. And what is your name, Captain? Jacob. Jacob, all right. Much appreciated. Thank you for coming. YouTube in about two or three days. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. And that was the Harbor Cruise. And two thumbs up. The Harbor Cruise was awesome. We had a lot of fun. Uh, Captain Jacob was great, and it's really worth it. I would rather do the Harbor Cruise than so doing the oil rig. There was the first mate. Thanks. And. All right, and we saw dolphins. We got to see just a tour of the harbor, give you some historical facts. They showed us some of the fish market stuff. Really, really cool. So save your money in the other museums in the movie and spend it here. Yeah, because absolutely. it was totally worth it. It was 10 bucks a person and just, a, cool. just really worth it. It was about an hour, hour and a half, and I think it was a, a good time. I don't think we're gonna get a chance to do the tall ship today, huh? 
Nope. Nope. Next time. They close. Oh, it's already closed. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so with that being said, the Harbor Cruise, according to our rating system, we're gonna say it's a two. We're gonna say that it's a, a if you're in, in the area. area, but if you're in the area, it's one of the things that you it's should do. Must do. Because you get to see a, an oil tanker wreck as well, which is kind of cool. And it's the only way to see that, so. And they give you a lot of information about the pier and the business around and the, the tall ship, Elisa. So it's a lot of information. Yeah. So if oh, you're wow. in the area, absolutely should do oh, it. You're missing it. <laughs> oh. We're having lunch at, I guess it's Linner. We're having Linner. Paul had to take one for the team. Yeah. Okay. We're at a place called Shrimp and Stuff. It's kind of like a local Galveston staple. And obviously a lot of it's shrimp. So I'm eating french fries and Lori's having her shrimp. And your shrimp compared to the stuff the other day? It's excellent. My shrimp here is well worth it. So shrimp and stuff is good. We have no idea how much it's going to cost yet. It's not that price, I don't think. So she's also trying hush puppies, and I don't think you guys know what hush puppies are. I have never had them before. Only tried them from somebody else once. Like somebody gave me one. Did you try one yet? Yeah. And? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to compare it to. So where we're gonna end it today gang if you haven't been here before be great if you subscribe to the channel stay up to date on everything we're doing and it would be awesome if you liked the video thanks for watching we'll see you again soon bye now